who, if anyone two days passes by him, من تساوى يوماه فهو مغبون. He is a loser. الله أكبر. الله أكبر. Which means that every day you have to improve of what you are doing. Upgrade the way you are doing things. And in every aspect of your life. Many of the Sahaba, when they used to go to bed at night and so on, and ah, did I improve in this? Did I improve in that? After a while, they became giants. There is no limit of the improvement which they can make. Simplest things. You go home. Just smile a bit more to your children and your wife at home. A bit better than the day before. And continue with it. You will bring peace and tranquility to the family. If you are working in the office, think how you can improve to do in less time and less expense and so on. This is what we call in modern terminology research and development, R&D. This telephone, it was just for communication, just a few years ago. This is a very new gadget. We did not have maybe less than a decade ago to this telephone. Every day it was improved. Someone came and made a small change in the chip. Man tasawa yawmahu. He didn't want to be the same condition as it was until it became one of the computers, all the knowledge of the world is actually in this and you can access it anytime you want. How did this come? That little thing which the Prophet wasallam taught the humanity. Improve. Do a bit better. Bring a bit upgrading and this and that until it became what it is. Think about it along those terms. You will see that we are in a different level of the human development. That is the change which we want to make in order that to deserve the level which we are aspiring for in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. Many people will look at this question in different way and they will bring you different solutions and so on. All right? This is at least one which will bring and upgrade to all the members of the Muslim society to become elevated a bit more than what they are. We can do it. It is doable by every one of us. I want to hear that, inshallah, every one of us will make the effort to be able to do this. One of the things which has come to our society and why we have been in this kind of a situation, we have become individualistic. Nafsi, nafsi. And we know also that the Prophet even in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he says, Ummati, Ummati. Let us reorient ourselves. Again, going to this uh, Surah Al-Fatiha in another direction with the same words. A Bedouin in the middle of the desert or a brother in the middle of the jungle stands for the prayer. He reads Surah Al-Fatiha, reaches to this place. Iyaka na'bud. He doesn't say Abud. He is alone, sitting there. There is no one around him. He is with the Ummah, which he is talking about. We have eroded this impact from our personalities. The next verse. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ نَسْتَعِينَ Plural. With the Ummah, not alone. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. 
not ihdini. That doesn't have a place for us. This is a collective ummah. They cannot just think of themselves. They have to think all of them. One of the arkan of Islam is a zakah. You cannot be a true Muslim if you do not think about the people who are less fortunate around you. This was the tarbiyah which the Prophet ﷺ gave to the companions. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا Allah Ta'ala describes the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They prefer to give to their brothers who are in need even if they were themselves in need. This is the kind of a society Islam built. We can redo it. We have the examples. We have seen it succeed in a human society. The role of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was this Qur'an, which is the word of Allah Ta'ala, which will never change, no matter what they try to do it. No matter what they try to do it, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhoon. It will not change that it is practically usable in a human society and it will upgrade it to these heights. This is the role of the Prophet ﷺ. Came to a society, limited. When he applied this in a human form, brought all these change which is there. It's not utopia. It is not something we are talking out of our mind. This can be repeated. And in a better way. Some of you may be surprised of this hadith. And I'm sure many of you have read it and not given it the importance which when I realized the meaning of it, it changed my life. The Muslims need to comprehend even when they are praying what it is. He doesn't even know what he is saying to Allah Ta'ala. He has invited him five times a day. When we read these things, I don't really concentrate and to see how it implies in our life, what reaction it will make when I say this to Allah Ta'ala. It liberates you from all the fears of the world. And some aspect of it in Egypt was very clear when this thing came about. Once they destroyed that barrier of the fear, they were able to change the biggest ta'ut on earth. We can do it. This will do it. Come back to the basics which Allah Ta'ala has given us and we will be able to bring the change which is needed. And from a very practical example and mathematics for an engineer also to practice and I have done it in our own life with the group of people which we have done. One plus one is equal to 11 they will be as effective as 11 if they are really with full understanding with each other. Maybe we don't realize that equations like this doesn't happen. We have done it. I have seen with, with brother which we work together collectively this way, we were able to achieve even more than that. One plus one plus one is 111 times more effective. In chemistry, we have equations. This plus that, it comes out these products. And sometimes there is something which goes into the equation, but it doesn't react with them, Amil Musaid. 
and it's not seen on the equation, which is barakah of Allah Ta'ala. When you put sincerely your attention to be able to do something to help the humanity, just for personal interest, Allah Ta'ala will put that barakah which is needed. And I have seen the result when we became, our group became free. And I can give you the names. Some brothers know these names if I uh, say. Add one more, it will be 1111. Even up to here, the formula of Umar radiallahu anhu is better than our modest formula. He sent four people and told the army of the Muslims in Persia, I send you 4,000. And uh, they said the Muslim help has come because the army saw that they are very small in number and these are 100,000 people with the equipment, with all the facilities which they have and these people had very little. That's why he, sent, he said to Umar, please send me some help. He sent him 4,000, he said. He said, where is the 4,000? I didn't see any dust, I didn't see any voice and so on. And Qaqqa gave him the, the letter and said, I have sent you 4,000 people, these four people. Immediately they came to meeting and said, let us see what is the strategy, what is the problem which are there and so on. Now I am making it like Abu Hassan Nadawi. Again, he puts this in a very beautiful uh, manner in one of his articles. So oh, that's fine, simple. Now you know what is the main problem? There is this big elephant all the horses and mules and so on of the Muslims is not able to advance. They are frightened from this elephant and they are g going backward. He said, come my brother, be on my shoulder. Tomorrow morning we will go in the morning to the big elephant. And the other one rode the, on the shoulders of his other brother. Each one of them, they had their spears in their hand, and they, at one time, they hit the eyes of the elephant. The big white elephant they had in that one. This elephant went backwards, and these people were frightened from the elephant. It's very, in very bad shape, and the Muslims just went back, and they won the, in their back, and they won, and they were defeated. So don't, uh, don't underestimate what you can do. Four people were 4,000 and they made the difference for the entire humanity. It is not only by the numbers. And the Quran makes this very clear. We have to use our brains and put our trust to Allah Ta'ala. This is four, Umar's formula, 4,000, mine is 1,111. If you put one more, mine will be a bit higher. It will be 11,111. And I have seen it in practice. We have worked on so many projects, and we have produced as much as those people. My dear brothers, and sisters of this wonderful community of Muslims in this country. You can start this process and give a model to the other countries what the Muslim Ummah can do. We do not have to go and beg the United Nations or big powers or this and that so that they will give us one portion of our rights. We can do it. We can change first our own conditions, and Allah Ta'ala will change the condition of the, inshallah, for the entire humanity. The Muslims in Sri Lanka are about 8%. Nine. Ten. It's okay. 